Hello, Crypto Wisers. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Milton, and I will be your captain for this episode. Guys, there is no way to sugarcoat this. This has been a bloodbath out there. If you are like me, I am sure your bags are hurting. We got Bitcoin all the way down at $31,454 at the time of me making this video, which is down 12% on the day. Ouch. And with Bitcoin going down, the whole market is going down with it. Ethereum down 16%. Binance coin 17%. Our beloved Polkadot down 24%. Ow. Down 35% on the seven day. So look, I am in this with you guys my bags are shrinking and shrinking fast. On days like this, there's only one question to ask. WTF? What the F is going on? So in today's video, I thought I would take a quick look at some on-chain market indicators for Bitcoin, talk about a few of my favorite on-chain data points that I like to look at. And to do that, we'll be using the Glassnode Studio from our friends over at Glassnode. This is a amazing data resource. I love using this site. And so we're going to dig into some of the key indicators for Bitcoin today and see if we can figure out what the F is going on. In markets like this, you know what to do. Buckle up because this crypto stuff is a hell of a bumpy ride. All right, crypto wisers, let's get into this. Again, in today's video, I'm going to be using Glassnode, an amazing data analytics site for Bitcoin and Ethereum. They actually put out their blog today. They do a weekly on-chain analysis. This one came out today. So if you're into this stuff, I definitely recommend signing up for their newsletter. It's great. It's free. You get weekly analysis of the on-chain analytics for Bitcoin and other things. And in today's newsletter, they did touch upon what's going on in China. A lot of crazy stuff. They are banning Bitcoin in China, shutting down all the miners. Look, they've done this before. I think long term, this is going to be good for Bitcoin. There was way too much consolidation of mining for Bitcoin in China. I think this is going to spread it out. Most of the most dirty mining was in China. And so that's going to also alleviate that kind of narrative around Bitcoin being bad for the environment when we get other countries doing more of the Bitcoin mining. But in the short term, definitely having an effect on the market. And it has been painful. But as they say here, one of the largest migrations of Bitcoin hash power in history appears to be underway following an official ban of mining activities in a number of Chinese provinces. Many miners are in the process of shutting down or migrating their hash power outside of China's borders. And they've got a tweet here from Nick Carter who says some mining farms went down in Szechuan overnight. Quick reactions. The mining ban appears to be as comprehensive as believed. Even hydro-powered provinces aren't being spared. Hash rate transaction is real and the nature of Bitcoin hash rate will entirely change in the next 6 to 12 months. So this is huge. This is definitely huge. Again, I think long term, this is going to actually be good for Bitcoin, but it's going to be a bumpy ride until things settle out. So that is the Glassnode newsletter comes out every week. Definitely recommend it. It is free. A lot of great info straight to your email. Now, I do have a paid account here on Glassnode. So some of the stuff I'm going to be showing you is through my paid account. And if you don't have the paid account, what you won't see is the latest information. So you can still access the site if you're not a paid member, but you just won't see the very latest information. So I'm going to go through uh, just a couple of my favorite metrics here and see if we can see what's going on. And really, there are a ton of really great metrics to look at. One of the amazing things about blockchain, obviously, it's a public ledger. It's creating immutable data all the time. And so it's pretty amazing that in real time you can get all this information. First one I want to look at is the SOPR. All right. So the SOPR is the spent output profit ratio. And very simply, this gives us a sense if people are selling their Bitcoin at profit or if they're selling at a loss. So let's take a smaller data size here. Let's go from 2017 to today. So this one line here, this black line in the middle at one, that is neutral. That would be if you sold at uh, zero loss, zero profit. The orange squigglies on top of the one, that means that people were selling at profit and under 
this means they were selling at a loss. So as we can see from this chart, it's only recently that people have been selling at a loss because we had such a great rally here. So this capitulation down here, this was in March when uh, COVID hit and the stock market crashed, Bitcoin crashed. We had a lot of people sell at a loss then and that continued for a little bit. But then since then, really people have only been selling in profit. And if we go from September of last year to January of this year, it's only been profit taking for Bitcoiners. And really even in the recent crashes, for the most part, that was people taking profits. But here we see some capitulation happening very recently. A lot of people deciding to sell at a loss. Obviously, if you got into Bitcoin but above these prices, you're at a loss yourself. It sucks to see these prices, but this is a good sign in terms of when we'll see a turnaround of this market. Now that we see people taking losses, you're going to get less people wanting to sell at a loss. It's not until you see the kind of below one capitulation here that we start to see an uptrend. So we saw a bunch back here in the last bear market. But even though the last few weeks or month or whatever has felt really bearish, most people who are selling were still making a bit of a profit. Now that's changing. Now you're getting people selling at a loss. So I do think most likely it means that we're getting closer to a bottom. And this is kind of what I'm looking for in this data. Where are we at? Are we oversold or are we overbought? Where can we start feeling comfortable buying back in? That's kind of my question. And even if I'm not hitting the bottom bottom, where do I start slowly buying back in? And when I see signs like this of so many people selling Bitcoin at a loss, that shows me that there's panic, shows me that it's oversold. And that's one sign that I look for. And this is it with the seven day EMA turned on. So it just gives us maybe a clearer picture, more of a seven day average kind of shows us more of a trend here. And as we can see, the higher these peaks are, the more profit people are making. And then the lower, the bigger a loss they are at. So we're the furthest below this line that we have been since again, that capitulation in March of 2020. So I think this is a sign for me that we are getting oversold. Let's quickly look at a couple other ones. One of the metrics that has one of the best names, of course, is the NUPL. The N-U-P-L stands for Net Unrealized Profit Loss. Gotta love the NUPL. And this one is color-coded, which is always helpful. And this one basically gives us kind of a snapshot. If people sold right now, would the market be overall in profit or overall in deficit? Now, when it gets into the red here, it means most people would be selling at a loss. This is unrealized, so this isn't people who sold. It's just if all the Bitcoin in wallets right now, if they sold now, would those wallets be in profit or would they be in loss? Now, let's zoom out for this one to get a better sense of the peaks and valleys that have gone on in the history of Bitcoin. So the euphoria is the blue, okay? So that's when the most people would be in profit, and then we see these peaks happen, and usually there is a huge sell-off after these peaks. So we had it in the 2013, 2014 cycle. And then again, we saw that blue tip right here just before the last crash when we hit that all time high, the old all time high of around 20,000 that got into the blue. Then we saw a whole lot of red here in the bear market. And so this last year, this last bull cycle that we were in, we never hit that blue peak yet. We haven't seen any blue yet, and that's one of the reasons why most of us thought that the bull market was going to continue, that we hadn't had that euphoria yet. But we see a big downturn so far, but we're still in the green, which does mean that there is a long way down that we could still go for most people to have to be in deficit. And that really shows that there are a lot of long-term hodlers out there that even with this big crash that we're seeing, obviously 30,000 is still well above the last all-time high. And so you're still going to have a lot of people in profit. So this one's a bit tricky because we're nowhere near being oversold from this metric. If this bull is really over, we could see it go further down and start getting into the yellow and the reds and the oranges. But maybe it's just a correction and we see ourselves go up further because we never got that blue peak. So this one could go either way, but very interesting. The Nuple love this metric. And the last one I'm going to look at quickly here is Coin Days Destroyed. All right, this is a very interesting one. Coin Days Destroyed. This is the seven day moving average. This is from 2012 to 2021. 
So essentially, so what this one means is one coin day destroyed. So if I buy Bitcoin today and I sell it tomorrow, that would be one coin day destroyed because I basically held that Bitcoin for one day. So if I hold one Bitcoin in my wallet for 365 days and then I sell, so I hold it for a whole year and then I sell, that's 365 days destroyed. So where you see these huge peaks, that means that Bitcoin that has been held for a very long time is being sold. And we see big spikes here in the last bull run where old, old Bitcoin was being sold. Then in 2019, we saw some huge spikes during the bear market where you have to imagine that very old Bitcoin was getting sold. And then again, over this last bull kind of spike here that we had when we went to the 60,000 or whatever, again, much older Bitcoin, a lot of people taking profits. But what we're seeing recently, a lot of new Bitcoin being sold, as you can see. So let's zoom in a bit. So this is only the last couple of years, the last four years. And as you can see, in terms of coin days being destroyed, very low in, in comparison. So you're getting a lot of newer coins being sold or coins that haven't been held in those wallets for very long. Those are the ones being sold. There are a lot of indicators for this, whether whales are selling, hodlers are selling. This is one of them. The story of this graph at the very least is saying that only newer coins right now are being sold or mostly newer coins are being sold. You're not getting very many coin days destroyed. It seems like the hodlers are still hodling here. Like at the peak back in January, you were getting about 32 million coin days destroyed. And now we're down at about 11, you know, 10 or 11. So that's about average here. You can get down lower, obviously down into 4 million. It's usually in the millions though. Here again, 4 million. So 4 million is very low and we're in at around 10, 11. But you're definitely not seeing the longer term Bitcoiners, the hodlers, what some people might call the smart money. Because when you see these peaks go up, that's a kind of an indication that the smarter money is kind of going out, might be an indication for you to take some profit. So here I'm not seeing that. And again, that's an oversold kind of panic seller, newbie selling. Uh, and so it makes me less worried that we're going to fall even further if a lot of the hodlers are holding on to their Bitcoin. If we were higher up to around these levels, I'd be a lot more worried, especially because some of the longer held Bitcoin are the bigger wallets as well. So they would have a lot more to sell. So those are three metrics I like to look at out of many. I mean, Glassnode has so many here. As you can see, like look at all these different metrics. So for those of you who are into this sort of data, like looking at the on-chain metrics, I'm going to sprinkle in a few videos here and there to look at some of these different metrics, explain them to you. And again, I use Glassnode. There are other analytics sites out there, but I really think the team at Glassnode do a really great job. So that's the one that I use. But if you're investing in Bitcoin, if you're investing in Ethereum, I really think it is smart to be watching these on-chain metrics. They really do tell you the story of what is going on. Now you have to create the investment strategy around that information, but it is a very good, important information to have in your toolkit. All right, Crypto Wisers, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And while you're at it, would you do us a favor and follow us on Twitter? We got our Twitter account back. It's at CryptoWiseDaily, at CryptoWiseDaily. So if you're on Twitter, make sure you give us a follow there. All right, CryptoWisers, a lot of red on these charts. Hopefully we'll be waking up to some green. I'm feeling the pain with you. You are not alone. But looking at some of these metrics, it definitely looks like we are getting oversold. And the good news is once we bottom, we can start going up again. And there is always a bottom. Don't worry, we will find the bottom and we will again get to start going up because that's when the fun happens. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. Until next time, I'm Milton saying over and out.